Hello, dear ladies! Today I'm going to present a really interesting message before you. It was, in a sense, sort of unplanned, but I think in God's providence there are, there are no such things as unplanned things. So obviously God in His providence directed me to give you this message. So as you know, we have been studying Eve. And as I gave the message on the purpose for which a woman was created, a young woman named Laura commented in my comment section and asked me, what is my purpose? I am not married. Obviously implying that, you know, she's not married yet, she doesn't have a husband. So what is the purpose for a life of an unmarried young lady? And I'm assuming she's a Christian she is, since she's watching my videos. So basically to make a long story short, I'm dedicating this video uh, to all the ladies who are asking the same question, as I call them ladies in waiting, who are not married yet, but are asking the same question, what is my purpose? And obviously, dear Laura, this message is also dedicated to you. And I have titled my message, Lady in Waiting and Her Divine Purpose wisdom for young Christian women. And I'm assuming that this message is going to be in two parts. I'm going to break it down for you, for all the unmarried ladies. And obviously, I would love you to maybe listen to this message with your mom, with an older lady that disciples you, or whoever, you know, that figure of authority in your life that is by your side. Just bring that lady along, listen to the message, discuss it, get it deeper under your skin, so to say, and ask some questions once again. I thought this would be really, really appropriate to give this message to build up and encourage specifically the unmarried ladies in their call. Okay, and obviously if you're a mother, by the way, who has young daughters, it would be absolutely amazing so you can listen to this message with them or without them and pass this wisdom to them so you know how you can encourage them to live up to that divine purpose that God has designed for them to live up to. It, it, a lot is in your hands, so you can build them up and encourage them in this, in this divine purpose. And we will start, uh, by the way, before I proceed, I wanted to establish one universal truth and principle, which is everything that I have talked about in the message on the purpose for which women were created is universal. It applies to all women, which means, if you remember what we studied, that um, God created a woman uh, for, uh, to be his representation, as you remember, which is we remember means he, uh, a woman was made in his image so she could shine forth that image on the earth and uh, compliment her husband, and a representative, which means she was given this task alongside her husband to take dominion over the earth. So those two main principles, they are universal for all women. We don't cancel them when we talk about, you know, younger ladies, younger women. So we will start, have your Bibles nearby. We will start with 1 Corinthians 11, 9. Obviously, uh, we mentioned that verse many, many times, but it ne I'm never tired uh, mentioning this verse. Nor was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. This is, you know, what God establishes in his, word, in his word. A woman was created for the man. Okay, let us proceed with our fourfold purpose for young ladies, for you, Laura, and all the young ladies that are listening to us. And I will go through them one by one. And I guess today we probably will just go through first two. But right now I will name them all so you know what we're going to face, so to say, in our study. Okay, your complex fourfold purpose. Your complex fourfold purpose. This purpose is a, as beautiful as a diamond, which, which is being shaped by God. So we are going to look at four sides of this beautiful diamond, of this beautiful diamond of a purpose for you. Number one, God desires a young Christian woman to be transformed into the image of Christ, 
which means to be his representation on his earth. Now we are on this side, uh, we are, meaning we are on the side of the new covenant, obviously, right now. So now, as a Christian lady, you have this incredible purpose to be transformed into the image of Christ, to be Christ's representation. Second, and to be him on this earth, which is to be his representative, to be him on this earth, which is to be his representative, which means to be his hands and feet, um, and being his, ve being his vessel, he can use to accomplish his will on this earth. Basically, it's all about him. He wants you to be his hands and feet on this earth. He wants to use you for his glory and use you in loving service for him. Our next purpose, he desires for you, his purpose for you is to be prepared, for you to prepare yourself for your future role and purpose that we have established earlier as a future helper to your future husband that God in his mercy and in his grace has prepared for you already. And one day he will release that man into your life. Um, so, he, he's preparing you and his purpose is to prepare you to fulfill that future purpose as a helper suitable to your husband. Then, our ultimate purpose is that God purposes through all the, these above purposes <laughs> to prepare you for the ultimate marriage supper of the Lamb when you as a Christian will enter into this eternal marriage with the Lord for all eternity. This is his ultimate purpose, for you to be betrothed to Christ in eternity when you enter eternity. So this is his ultimate purpose. So uh, let's go back. Um, Ah, no, 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 we're not going back anywhere. Let me just comment a couple, on a couple of things that I just mentioned, all this fourfold purpose. And you can go back and pause and, you know, so we can, all those, perp, all those sides of the purpose can kind of sink in deeper into you. In his infinite wisdom, God knows that if you take, as a younger lady, if you take this direction in pursuing this fourfold purpose, you will be fulfilled because he desires you to be completely fulfilled in him because this is his purpose. And you will be able to grow deeper in love with him while accomplishing this divine purpose. And notice, I don't call it purposes. These, this is like one diamond with four sides. This is one purpose, but it's deep and complex. I say purpose because all the components of it are interconnected. You cannot separate one from the other. It is a wholesome, perfect purpose. It is complete. Only by pursuing this purpose, um, you will live in harmony with God, in harmony with people around you, and you will have a fulfilled life. Okay. So now we just we come to kind of looking deeper into each side of this beautiful diamond that God is shaping you into, into this beautiful, beautiful gem, correct? Number one, God purposes you to be transformed into his son's image, which we all know happens throughout your whole life through the process of sanctification, as he is sanctifying you, which means he's separating you unto himself more and more and making you more and more like Christ. Let us take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Chapter 3, verse 18. And we all, who we, us as Christians, you included, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, 
who is the spirit? What is it talking about? It's talking about us throughout our life being transformed from one degree of holiness and into more and more and more. We are progressing, correct? We are progressing in our in degrees, if you will, of our holiness. We are becoming more and more like Christ. Um, Romans 8.29, for those God for you, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among any brothers and sisters, and to be conformed and to be not and to, to not be conformed to, the, to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So what do we see here? For those God foreknew, he also predestined. It, it means that before you or even born, God foreknew you as his own. He knew that he would create you and that he, he will separate you unto himself and give you a gift of faith and one day he will quicken you from the dead and you breathe that new life into you. That's why it's called new birth. I cannot rebirth myself, correct? correct? It's a divine work. So he knew that. He quickened you. Then he also, it says, predestined you to be conformed into the image of his son. So this is his purpose for you through your life. And we are going to look deeper into it after we look at our one more scripture. 1 John 3, 2. 1 John 3, 2. We know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So at the end of your life, wherever that may come, it might come, you know, in 20 years, in 50 years, in 70 years, or in five years. But at the end of your life, you will be like him. He will accomplish what he has started in you, that work of sanctification, in, in, in which will flow into glorification. Okay, so before you were even born, God predestined you to be conformed into the image of his son. He foreknew you as his own. There are two main ways through which a young Christian woman, as you are, is being transformed into Christ's image. And this is really important to pause right now and listen very carefully because you want to fulfill this purpose for your life, to be transformed into the image of Christ. So listen, two main ways. Way number one. The main way is through drawing closer to Christ in prayer and creating that personal relationship with him on daily basis through prayer and communion with him every, every day. You are developing a close and intimate relationship with Christ on daily basis. The more time you spend with, in Christ's presence, the more you will be like him. Just the same principle works in our life. The more I, time I spend with my husband, the more I, I am like him. The more time I spend with my uh, best friend, Ira, uh, the more I'm like her, correct? Um, you are developing a close and intimate relationship with Christ. There is nothing that you need that he cannot give you or cannot satisfy. And this is coming from a 43-year-old woman. In my life, I am convinced, I know, uh, this is experiential knowledge, that there is nothing in my life that Christ cannot fulfill and cannot satisfy. Even when he takes uh, he is everything I need, you know. He will satisfy every gap that I might have within, so to say. Um, and the purpose of your life is to be like Christ. You have a huge role in this purpose being fulfilled by intentionally, and I stress that word intentionally, intentionally and consciously 
reaching out to Christ throughout the day in prayer. And yes, of course, here I mean, you know, quiet time with the Lord, but I mostly mean here is walking in the spirit throughout the day, crying out to him when you are hurt, crying out to him, you know, one little arrow prayer when you're upset, crying out to him when you're in the traffic, somebody cuts you off, crying out to him when whatever your situation is, just those lead, you are constantly in communion with Christ, not only in Sunday in church when you come and you're just a pious, pious young little girl. No, on daily basis, this is what I mean. Um, as you pray, he fills you with his virtues and abundant grace. Without grace, you cannot go through his life. You need daily grace to go through the challenges. You need your daily grace to go through pain in life. And this is real life. We are on this plane, the plane, planet. There is a lot of pain in this life, even in the life of a young lady. Um, he fills you with his wisdom when you're in his presence, correct? When you're in his word, with his peace and joy. And most import importantly, you fall in love with him more and more and more. The more time you, it's like, it's, it's a given. The more time you spend in, he, in his presence, the more time you will want and desire to spend in his presence. I guarantee it. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Yeah, but I'm sure you will not be able to. So uh, it's just, it just, that's how it works. Okay, the second way by, by which you are transformed into, the, into Christ's image is through you, renew your, renewing your mind with God's word. Renewing your mind with God's word. Till you start thinking his thoughts and till your own thoughts are, are going to be so sanctified and polished and renewed that they will be like God's thoughts, you know, they will be pure, holy, and separated. They will be purged and cleansed. They will be like little crystals. As you study Christ's character, you start to imitate him and become more like him in your thoughts and in your actions. You start hating sin more. You become more giving, more vigilant in your prayer life, more vigilant in um, renewing your mind and testing yourself whether your actions are righteous or not, and have a growing desire to serve and live in holiness and humility. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good an acceptable and perfect will of God. And both of these words that we just mentioned in this verse, God mentioned <laughs> in this word, verse, transformed and conformed have a common root, which is, means form. That common root means form, meaning a pattern or mold. Being transformed refers to the process. Conformed refers to the finished product, so to say. Jesus is your, as young ladies, pattern or mold that on a daily basis you're being molded and formed into. We are being transformed so that we will eventually be conformed to the likeness of Jesus. Sanctification or holiness, which sometimes these both words are used interchangeably, is, is conformity to the likeness of Jesus Christ. And our main purpose, our ultimate purpose, is that we will be obviously um, without spot or wrinkle presented before the Lord one day as a spotless bride of Christ. Okay. Now, let us take a look at our second purpose. We are looking at it in detail, in detail. Our second purpose. As you remember, which one is it? <laughs> I, hope, I hope you remember. So, our second purpose. Christ purposes you to be him, which means his representative on this earth. We remember in the, uh, as we studied Eve, 
Adam and Eve were meant to be God's representative now on the side of the New Testament, New Covenant with Christ as Christ's, Christ's bride, as church, we need to be his representative on this earth. As a, little, as a Christian, you are, you are little Christ on the earth. And in fact, this is exactly what that word means. Christian means little Christ. Um, you are his hands and feet. You represent him to your friends, to your church, to your family, to your brothers and sisters, to everyone around you. You are his hands and feet. Your actions should reflect him as you examine your decision and decisions and your thoughts and your life in the light of his character and <clears throat> excuse me and his word okay let us take a look at a couple of ways in the way that you are being Christ's feet and and uh, his hands on this earth you are being his representative on this earth number 1 the main way in which you as a young lady reflect Christ to the world is through your public proclamation of faith, verbal or through actions, through your public proclamation of faith, verbal or through actions. What does it mean on the practical level for you right now today? What does this mean? First of all, you're not ashamed to be a Christian. You're not ashamed to speak boldly about him. You're not ashamed to evangelize because you know that's what you're called to do. You're not ashamed of being persecuted for righteousness and for your righteous standards. When you dress modestly and are persecuted and others mock you and say you look, you know, prehistorical or something, you rejoice when you choose to go, you rejoice. Or when you choose to go to church on Sunday instead of when your people or friends that you know might be calling you to do something else or running to the beach or whatever, but you refuse and go to church instead or choose to go to a um, ladies' Bible study or gathering, um, you rejoice because you know that you are choosing what is right. You're choos your priorities are right. You're choosing Christ. This is a public proclamation of your faith, even without, in a sense, saying something. Sometimes our actions speak so much louder than, than words, correct? We all know that. Actually, most of the times they do, if not all the time they do. Um, or when a you know, young man, a handsome young man in a youth group or wherever approaches you with some maybe impure motives, you know, and just tries to take you to a place where you don't want to go, you know, and you refuse and you say, no, I choose Christ. I'm not going to uh, choose a second of pleasure somewhere, sorry, in the bush, <laughs> but I'm choosing Christ. And that proclamation of your faith speaks volumes. This is what I'm talking about. This is where rubber meets the road. This is your public proclamation of faith. You choose righteousness. You choose holiness. You choose Christ. You have a fear of God in your heart, a healthy fear of God in your heart. You don't want to sin. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, correct? So these are all public proclamations. Um, you refuse anything that's uh, lustful. You refuse anything that is sinful. You pray for God's protection over your mind and body. These are all public proclamations of your faith and show that you love God more than anything or anybody else. Okay, now let us take, about at the, at, take a look at the second way through which you, becomes, you become Christ's representative, which is through serving everyone around you. You become Christ's representative through serving, through the work, work of service to everyone around you. Since Christ came to serve, not to be served, we know that this is what, what 
every Christian is called to. This is the purpose. This is how we are uh, becoming his hands and feet on this earth. Christ's purpose for your life is to use you for his glory in accomplishing his purposes on this earth. He wants you. It's all about him. It's all about him. He wants to use you as a vessel. You know, since he's in heaven right now, rule, uh, sitting on the throne, he needs to use us, correct? So we, we are vessels for, for his purposes on this earth to be accomplished. Christ's purpose for your life is, is to use you for his glory in accomplishing his purposes on this earth. He wants you to be available and open to be his hands and feet through serving your family, which is your number one priority, family, 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 or whatever that unit that you're in right now, your spiritual family, which is obviously the body of Christ, and maybe even on the mission field, if the Lord calls you, you know, prior to your marriage. Christ desires for you to fulfill this part of his purpose for you, so you always need to keep your eyes open at how you can serve him. This is one of the most important things, always keeping your eyes open. So your purpose is to be Christ's representative and representation on this earth. So we, we just cover two uh, of those sides of our diamond, Christ representative and representation on this earth. Okay, and I will see you in our part two of our study where we will take uh, a look at our two other sides of this beautiful diamond and I will also equip you with a couple of resources so you can fulfill this, this uh, incredible purpose, this divine purpose that God has for you and I hope you have been encouraged. Please ask questions. And once again, thank you, Laura, for asking your question because it inspired this video and it inspired the study for you. I hope it will be really, really helpful. God bless, and I will see you in part two. God bless.